Hey guys, and welcome to season two of the No Huddle brought to you by HBCU Game Day. Now, let's state the obvious. There will be not a single black college football game played in 2020, unless you guys are going to play some Nerf outside. <laughs> now, we might double dip in 2021, but that's, you know, still to be determined for the spring next year. So vote like your life depends on the people in November. It could help. It could help. But the HBCU Game Day crew, no matter who is in office, is committed to telling HBCU stories come rain, shine, or Rona. So here we are. The biggest story since we last met on the no huddle outside of the pandemic, of course, was the power moves made by the SWAC to swipe Florida A&M and Bethune-Cookman. Here's how it all went down. Since the 1979 expansion of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, Florida A&M and Bethune-Cookman University have been the entrenched representatives of the state of Florida in the only Division I HBCU athletic conference on the East Coast. But after 41 years of establishing rivalries up and down the I-95 corridor, the relationship between the MEAC and its Florida institutions have fallen apart, seemingly over the course of only one summer. And for the team at HBCU Game Day, the first unraveling thread of the MEAC's Florida footprint started in our Instagram DM. On May 19, uh, we got a direct message into our Instagram inbox asking us, uh, was there any truth to the rumor of FAMU moving to the SWAC? Now, we get stuff like this all the time, whether it is through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or, you know, whatever. So it kind of seemed like out of nowhere, but it wasn't shocking, overly shocking. So I passed on the DM to Von Wilson because I knew uh, if anybody would know what was going on at FAMU, it would be him. Well, when I first got the call from the crew to check into FAMU to see what was going on with FAMU, a possible move to the SWAC, I really thought, hey, this is just a, another in a long history of rumors about FAMU moving to the SWAC. It was nothing new. It's been rumored for years. Uh, so I checked with A.D. Gaucher and um, I left there uh, maybe feeling a little indifferent. In Vaughn Wilson's May 20th article on HBCUGameDay.com, he tells readers that he took the rumor straight to the source. He probably is a good poker player because he didn't tip his hand at all, except at the very end, where he's, he made the statement that FAMU is concentrated on staying in the MEAC to win the 2020 championship. That kind of tipped me off because it didn't leave room further than that. So I figured there may be something because he specifically said to compete for the 2020 championship. He did not say 2020 championship and beyond. The one line that stuck out to me was he said how they were committed to competing in the MEAC for 2020. And you know, that, that 2020 line stood out because it was specifically for the one year. It wasn't for the near future. It wasn't for the future. It wasn't, you know, it was just for 2020. So that kind of stood out for me. So when I was editing a story uh, at the end, uh, I put, you know, fam, you was staying put in the MEAC, but I put, added the four now. You know, you go from that uh, to the morning of uh, June 1st, um, I get a, another direct message uh, with the link this time to a uh, to an actual uh, document uh, talking about why fam you wanted to leave the MEAC for the swag and it was well drawn out. I mean, it was all right there. Steve has a, a way of dropping information in our channel without any context or or at most sometimes those little googly uh, eyeball emojis. Um, so he dropped it and I was like, what? What is this? And on June 1st, 2020, Stephen J. Gaither released an article titled Inside FAMU's Plan to Leave the MEAC for the SWAC, an article that would shake up the summer of 2020 in HBCU sports. When you actually saw the HBCU Game Day article that Stephen Gaither wrote in regards to um, understanding that the Board of Trustees was coming up with uh, for a meeting, you kind of started checking the box. All right, more things are going forward. Then officially by that article, it talked about actually showing you the PowerPoint presentation and some of the arguments that were going to be used in that framework uh, in regards to distance and things like that. Um, then you started realizing this is the real deal. Just to see it out there, it was like, 
once we got to the bottom of it, it was like, man, this is hiding in plain sight. Uh, but that's the great thing about dealing with state schools and covering them is they can't hide uh, because they're taxpayer funded. They have to put information out there once it's you know, in, in motion. Um, so seeing that was like, holy crap, I've got to sit here and watch a board of trustees meeting. During the June 3rd meeting of trustees, there were varied responses from the board members as to whether or not this was a path that the university should take. There has been concern and ongoing concern over the sustainability and membership expansion in the MEAC. Membership in the Southwestern Athletic Conference would reduce our travel expense by an average of $400,000 annually. It would align us with stronger brands that could generate additional revenue exposure. We firmly believe that FAMU would be better suited to be members of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. I mean, there's a timeline. So July 1st, we have to provide information to MIA. We also have to have a contract to see whether or not it, it's in line with what has been discussed. Even if we give our withdrawal by July 1st, it says here that we shall be required to fulfill conference scheduling commitments for four seasons after providing written notice. My concern is, you know, just taking into account all you just articulated, that's a lot to get it done in a short amount of time to make sure it's done with high quality. Ranging from skeptical to enthusiastic, the meeting concluded without a clear indication of which direction the June 4th vote would swing. But one thing was for sure, this had become the most anticipated Board of Trustees meeting in the history of HBCU sports. Personally, listening to the presentation and definitely the difference in funding, it makes sense. I want to say that this appears to be a little bit rushed. I mean, sometimes, you know, oftentimes when we make very big decisions, they come up as an information item. We have time to discuss them. Um, this one, while I understand the timing of it, seems as if, you know, given the uncertainties, I'm not 100% comfortable with it right now. I think from a student's perspective, um, I think A.D. Gauthier uh, mentioned that it was maybe the 24th talked about thing on Twitter this past week and uh, being able to kind of read through what some of our students were saying and, and the excitement that they had and being able to go and play Southern consistently, Jackson State, Grambling State, um, and being able to have that type of competition and, and energy within uh, Bragg Stadium. I support this move as well to the SWAC. I think that certainly the financial implications of it and that side-by-side -side comparison, you know, given all of the scenarios and kind of pre-COVID, just adding up the scenarios over that five or so year period, staying in the MEAC would result in a deficit of negative $3.5 million. Moving to SWAC would result in a uh, positive of $3 million. So from a financial standpoint, I think it makes great sense. I also appreciate that the fee would just be a reduction instead of something that um, would be a check that needs to be written. And I think there's no time like the present. You know, many organizations, colleges, businesses are having to make some really tough decisions to reduce expenses and drive greater revenue. So I am in full support and really excited about this opportunity to expand the FAMU brand and expand our reach and to increase the level of competition with other great HBCUs and to bring more fans and more revenue to our great university. And on Thursday, June 4th, the FAMU Board of Trustees voted unanimously to approve the Rattlers' move from the MEAC to the SWAC. And the Southwestern Athletic Conference wasted no time approving the move on their end. And by dinner time on June 4th, one of the crown jewels of the HBCU universe had left its home for 41 years to create what some have called an HBCU super conference. The excitement was all around, the alumni, uh, teacher staff, and of course the administration. So everyone was on board, including the coaches. So it was a natural move and uh, everything to be seemed to be on the right path. I think the, just the overall excitement of moving to the SWAC, especially from a football perspective, you know, Florida, you know, they live, eat, sleep, and breathe football. You know, that is a major part of life there in Florida. And, um, you know, so they're talking about going to a conference and they're drumming up about how big it has a football history and 
our pedigree and profile and other schools that are going to be, it'll be uh, like-minded schools. And I was in a little bit of disbelief, but at the same time, I, I wasn't surprised because when a and had left a few months earlier, we had heard about a and potentially leaving for like years, you know? So people kept saying, it was like, eh, whatever, whatever. And then when they left, I was like, whoa. And so then when it, yeah, I really thought like, all right, well, it's going to be fam, fam use league, like all to themselves. Like they're going to be the big dog. Uh, and then when they left or when we first heard about it, I was like, this cannot be happening. The MEAC cannot be falling apart at the seams. Like Hampton, okay, a and pump the brakes. FAMU, hit the emergency Fred Flintstone brakes. Once it was a finalized deal, I got some of the backstory about interviewing. And it was amazed, amazing to me when you break down all the categories. Students were engaged, were excited about the announcement of FAMU. For example, as we talked about Southern fans, they were anticipating the fact that they would see FAMU this year as they were prepared for them getting into the league uh, in 2021. Amid all the excitement, there were still some questions left to be answered about the ripple effects of such a big move. The one question that had the media and the fans talking the most was who, if anyone, might become the 12th team to join the SWAT. The Southwestern Athletic Conference was sitting comfortably as a 10-team league before FAMU decided to come on board. And with the Rattlers becoming the 11th team, it was assumed that a 12th school was sure to be announced to complete the HBCU Super Conference that fans have been waiting for for decades. The vote went down, it happened. The next day, Tyler talked to Commissioner Charles McClellan, and he talked about how he felt like he won the lottery. I said it yesterday. And I had the same feeling this morning. I think we won the lottery or I woke up. I just had a smile on my face. And with the July 1st deadline to exit the MEAC or any other conference for that matter and become a full member of the SWAC for the 2021 season, the clock was ticking on the dream of a 12-team SWAC juggernaut. And it only took a week for Stephen J. Gaither to hear about an emergency board of trustees meeting at another MEAC school. Another MEAC school in the state of Florida, to be exact. I just happened to uh, to call some folks that I know that went to Bethune Cookman that um, you know knew that that kind of uh, had some perspective on it and it found out it was a real thing. Put out uh, that statement about the meeting and, and that went everywhere. Uh, that went a lot of different places because at this time, you know, you're looking at the MEAC. They've already lost North Carolina A and T. They have lost. Uh, they're about to lose FAMU. And uh, and now they may be getting ready to lose uh, Bethune Cookman as well. So at this point, it's it's looking like wow, this 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 could be a thing. The departing MEAC train out of Florida might have another program on board. Read the headline of Stephen J. Gaither's June 19th article titled "Bethune Cookman BOT Holds an Emergency Meeting to Discuss Conference Affiliation." All the social media platforms were ablaze. It was on fire. The talk of a super conference was beginning. Uh, there was looks at the fact of who was going to be the 12th team. People wouldn't even let FAMU get in good before they were talking about who was the 12th team. Would it be Tennessee State or Bethune Cookman? If you know how the game goes, it was obviously going to be Bethune. Although I think a lot of people wanted, SWAC included, uh, Tennessee State to have the, the first right of refusal. Obviously, when FAMU got in the SWAC, that made it 11. And immediately rumors started swirling that Tennessee State would be the next target to try to balance out the conference into 12 teams. Obviously, the goal of a conference is to have uh, two divisions. And so Tennessee State was the name that was swirling and bound. Once it came out that Tennessee State was not interested in moving to the SWAC, Bethune-Cookman came squarely into view. And I called A.D. Lynn Thompson at Bethune-Cookman University, a great friend of mine. He's always been straightforward with me. And he said, yes, his board of trustees and administration at the university had charged him with looking into the SWAT. Uh, by the way that he said that, I knew that there was a high possibility that Bethune would be uh, the next team. It was a natural. The Florida Classic, Bethune and FAMU is 
one of the only classics that is owned actually by the instru institutions. It's not owned by a promoter. It's not owned by a venue. It is owned by the Florida A&M University and Bethune-Cookman University uh, schools. And so I knew that uh, that was the only thing that was actually keeping FAMU fans a little, a little leery was, uh, you know, are we going to still be able to play Bethune? I, knowing athletics, was not concerned. You know, University of Florida and Florida State are not in the same conference, yet they continue their rivalry. So I knew it wasn't that big of an issue. I think our fans just did not want to lose that history. The only thing that you're, you're not completely 100% excited about it is because it came at the expense of the MEAC, um, which has, has diminished them from a football level, especially when you, when you tack, tag on the fact that A&T left uh, along with Hampton. And three weeks after FAMU headed to the SWAC, the 12-team Voltron Super Conference was complete as Bethune-Cookman's board voted to leave the MEAC and join the SWAC on June 25, 2020, less than one week before the July 1st deadline. It's just been a matter of uh, dominoes for the MEAC falling for years. Um, you know, even though they've had some big wins, they've had some losses, you lose Hampton in 20, uh, 2017. You lose uh, Savannah State the next year because they have to go back to Division Two. Then you lose North Carolina A&T, which was a huge loss. And so you're like, wow, what is the MEAC going to do? And then you lose FAMU and Bethune-Cookman. And you're like, wow, this thing is really starting to unravel. Like, can they even keep their bid together? And just like that, in a month's time, the MEAC loses its entire Florida footprint and is left scrambling for answers to how they can stay a relevant D1 conference. And after downplaying the loss of six schools in a decade, it was time for MEAC Commissioner Dennis Thomas to finally address the public about the future of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. You know, the, the MEAC was... Like, they were on their last legs at that point. We were waiting to see if another team would leave within the next week. And there were thoughts of the MEAC might be done. Like, it might dissolve, like, right before our eyes. Like, you know, the, the sunshine hits a vampire. They just disintegrate. Uh, I, I thought it was a little a little sad, but appropriate uh, that, you know, Dr. Thomas was, was like in this big conference room with all these empty chairs. And, you know, it, it was almost like the, he was going down with the ship, like people had a, abandoned the ship and, and there he was. I have to admit, when I saw the press conference uh, of the MEAC with Dr. Dennis Thomas and the president of Howard University, I was a little shocked when I first tuned in. Uh, you have Dr. Thomas sitting in a room by himself off to one side, not well lit, uh, almost seeming a little disturbed uh, to even have to do it. I know Dr. Thomas for a long time, a great friend, is a, a guy that I can call. You know, I've called on several occasions or he's called me uh, when, we, when he's needed things from FAMU. So we've got a long relationship. In my opinion, you really started off when Winston-Salem State was unable to complete the transition. Um, and then you move forward a little bit. And while in during that process, you had the completion of expansion uh, with North Carolina Central and Savannah State. So you had a 13 member league, 11 participating football. Uh, they were really looking to get to 12 and 14. They could split up into division. That was not to be uh, with Winston-Salem State, as I said, moving back down uh, not completing the FCS Division One uh, transition. Commissioner Thomas talked about how uh, the footprint was back to where it was in 1970. It's interesting how history kind of repeats itself. We have six remaining uh, founding members of our conference. Commissioner Thomas said that um, the schools that were in the MEAC got their prominence in the MEAC. Um, uh, you know, we've seen some schools, uh, especially FAMU, uh, Bethune Cookman, you know, talk about, you know, they've been doing this before there was a MEAC. Um, so there was a little bit of, of that in the air, and it, um, it just 
um, seem like, um, you know, the, 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 the ground had been taken from them. So are they going to continue to do what they've done in the past, which is just kind of bring the next D2 team up? Or are they going to have to, you know, are they going to actually go and try to become the first D1 HBCU conference to get a PWI? Um, it's, uh, it, it, it was great theater. Um, it was, uh, it was uh, it, there was a lot of apprehension in the air. Um, I don't know that folks felt necessarily felt positive about it afterwards, you know, going forward, because, you know, at the end of the day, on, on July 1st, uh, 2021, you're going to have three teams that are going to be exiting the conference. So still a lot of, um, still a lot of apprehension about that. It was, it was, a, it's, it was a lot going on uh, in a short amount of time. Uh, so we're, you know, it'll be interesting to see how going forward these schools regroup. But um, yeah, it was, it, it was uh, quite telling uh, to see uh, just, just how quickly things change. And after all the meetings, votes, and speculation, the COVID-19 pandemic has shut down the 2020 football season, causing what would have been the last dance for the MEAC rivalries between North Carolina A&T, FAMU, and Bethune-Cookman to be a waltz with no dip. As the MEAC has postponed fall sports, leaving us all to wonder what could have been with one final season as MEAC rivals. Folks, that's the way the West and the East was won by the SWAC. The SWAC has taken over the state of Florida, and what was an already superb HBCU conference is now a super conference. But the big bad boss of 2020 is still COVID-19. Over the course of 49 days this summer, the virus slowly dismantled the season of every HBCU program. And next week on The No Huddle, we take you through the loneliest summer. Until then, I'm Tali Carr. Mask up, stay safe, and we'll see you next week.